just this year, we saw the creation of the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao yeah. to replace the ARMM, and this time we will have the Moro Islamic Liberation Front yeah. um, uh, sitting uh, sitting as head of the BARMM at least until 2022. Yeah. But still, you still have the Moro National Liberation Front uh, in the sidelines. Yeah. Uh, talk to us about the dynamics between the Moro Islamic and the Moro National Liberation Fronts, as well as uh, their dynamics with the political clans in Mindanao and uh, what it looks like as far as uh, uh, Bangsamoro peace uh, would be in the ne next few years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the situation in southern Philippines is very, very complicated because of different interests of various players, you know. We have the Moro National Liberation Front. Uh, in so many factions. Created with several <laughs> factions. We have the Moro Islamic Liberation Front. That has already been functionali uh, factionalized. We now have the breakaway group, the Bangsa yeah. Moro Islamic Freedom Fighter. Mm -hmm. And aside from that, we have existing traditional families and clans and warlords that can undermine the peaceful agenda of the Bangsa Moro government. It's really a complicated thing. And now we have new threat groups, the Mautes. Uh, Although that, that one was yeah. neutralized already. Yeah, but for me, the greater threat right now emanates from the, as far as the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region mm. is concerned, uh, the Abu Sayyab group operating mm. in, Archipel in I I island provinces of Sulu Basilan and Tawi, the Sambasulta, and in central Mindanao, the Bangsamoro Islamic Freedom Fighter, and uh, remnants of the Maoti group in Lanao yeah. province and uh, the Anchar Khalifa Philippines in Sarangani, General Santos areas. So uh, we still have these uh, pro-ISIS elements, and these pro-ISIS elements uh, continue to receive support from uh, foreign terrorist fighters. Even uh, with ISIS uh, stamped out in, in Syria? Yeah, they're on, they're right on now, run. in the post-Caliphate, post-Marawi period, uh, they have uh, pursued different approach to, uh, to uh, continue their uh, jihad. Uh, they lost their physical territory in Syria and Iraq, but they still have mm. a larger territory, the cyberspace. So they are mm. now operating in the cy cy cyberspace. And recently, uh, Abu Bakar Baghdadi released uh, mm. a, a video statement encouraging all its followers worldwide to uh, continue the jihad and even uh, encouraging their followers in the Philippines to rebuild the caliphate, the East Asia Wilayat in, uh, in uh, Southeast Asia, the main base of which is in the Southern Philippines. Mm -hmm. So they still have, and then they are, the ISIS is strengthening its foothold in, uh, in, the, in India and Pakistan. India and Pakistan. So uh, ISIS is down, but not yet defeated. And, and you, you, you think it can get support here? They're calling for all these types of uh, organization. If you rely on their conversation on social media and propaganda activities in social media, uh, uh, IC Central is throwing its support to their followers in the Philippines and followers in the Philippines are welcoming their support and that is why foreign terrorist fighters are coming to the Philippines. They That's are being problem. welcomed. Yeah. They are being welcomed by their supporters in the southern Philippines. So this so, sir, you're saying that, uh, that in effect we really haven't stamped out ISIS in the Philippines? They are uh, down as a result of the denial of their physical territory in Marawi, mm -hmm. but they are not defeated. Uh, their capability has diminished, but they can still make trouble. They're small, but they can still make big problems. Are they rebuilding currently? They are rebuilding, yeah. recruiting, and taking advantage of the situation in Mindanao, particularly in, uh, in the um, refugee camps in Lanao mm. province, you know taking advantage of the frustrations of families and individuals who uh, until now are still hoping to go back to their homes in Marawi. So they take advantage of that situation. Is there a danger of the threat spilling over into Metro Manila or at least Cebu maybe? The bigger cities. The whole cities. country is under continuous threat of terrorism. No, but that, that, threat, that threat specifically spreading to Manila. Manila is a continuing target. A continuing target. Uh, I don't want to sound alarmist, but it's their most favorite target uh, to, to hit mm -hmm. really Manila. The last time they hit Manila really, really bad was 2000 during the Rizal Day bombing. Yeah. But yeah. they repeated that with small attack, uh, not really small, but big also in the maritime domain, the Super Ferry 14 yeah, bombing, the Super Force, and the Valentine's Day bombing, and the EDSA, EDSA bombing. Mm. So they really want to target Metro Manila. But the good thing about the situation right now, our law enforcement authorities learn lessons after 911. They are more prepared now. They are more equipped now. And most importantly, they have a better understanding of the nature of terrorist threat that we confront. Unlike before, we were clueless. Mm -hmm. But now we have a clue.